Streptococcus viridens. It is a gram-positive coccus. Streptococcus has got two words in it. First one is trapped, which means chains. This bacteria actually has a chain-like growth pattern, as you can see in this picture, this one. And the word coccus means spherical or round. This bacterium has no motility apparatus, that's why this bacterium is a known motile. Motility apparatus can be a flagella or cilia. And this bacterium belongs to the family Streptococcaceae. And one really high you think there is that Streptococcus viridens is a group of bacteria. It's not a single bacterium. Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be discussing strapped weirdens in detail. In my recent video, I've talked about strapped pneumonia in detail. If you've missed that, find its link in the description. But before getting started, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So let's dive deeper into the video. Streptococcus weirdens is a catalase negative. If you're not familiar, with the catalase test, let me tell you. Catalase is an enzyme released by a certain bacteria. What does it do? It converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And then oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles, whether in a petri dish, test tube, or a microscopic slide. This bacteria is alpha hemolytic, which means that it is responsible for partial hemolysis. I'll be talking about the classification in a moment, but prior to that, let us discuss these points. And the alpha hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on optogen sensitivity. Streptococcus viridens is resistant to optogen. You can memorize it like that. Viridens has got R in it and it is resistant. And resistance also starts with R, so it is optogen resistant. Streptococcus viridens is bile insoluble, unlike strept pneumonia, which was bile soluble. It is a facultative anaerobe. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction of Streptococcus viridens. Now we'll be talking about the classification, morphology, habitat, transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. And at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Streptococcus is further classified based on serology that's also called Lance Field classification, also on the basis of hemolysis and biochemistry. On the basis of hemolysis, it is further classified into alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, and gamma hemolytic bacteria. Alpha hemolytic bacteria are responsible for partial hemolysis, while beta hemolytic bacteria are responsible for complete hemolysis on blood agar. And if we talk about gamma hemolytic bacteria, they are responsible for zero hemolysis, which means that they do no hemolysis. Alpha hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on optogen sensitivity. If a bacteria is sensitive to optogen, it is strep pneumonia, and if it is resistant, it is strep viridens. And today's video is about strep viridens. Strep pneumonia is optogen sensitive, which means that it will be killed in the presence of optogen disc, as you can visualize there. And strep viridens is optogen resistant, which means that it will not be killed in the presence of optogen. That's why there's no bacteria killed. Hemolysis is actually the breakdown of cells, the red blood cells. And if we talk about that in real world on cultures, it will be performed on blood culture. Alpha hemolytic bacteria is responsible for partial or incomplete lysis of blood. It forms a green zone around their colonies. The reason behind is that bacteria release hydrogen peroxide and it oxidizes hemoglobin in red color to biliverdin in green color. As you can see there, the yellow one is colony, the green one is the green zone around it, and the red color is depicting the blood agar. And this is the alpha hemolytic bacteria. Strept weirdens is bile insoluble, while strept pneumonia is bile soluble. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about the classification of streptococcus viridens. As I mentioned earlier that streptococcus viridens is not a single bacterium, it is a group of bacteria. I've mentioned the important ones, which include strept anginosis, strept mitis, strept sanguinis, strept salivaris, and strept mutants. Morphology. Strapped weirdens is spherical in shape. It is arranged in chains and its diameter varies from 0.5 to 2 micrometers. It is purple in color because it is gram-positive bacterium. Structure. It has thick peptidoglycan cell wall and it is not encapsulated. 
As I told you earlier that this bacterium is non-motile because it has got no motility apparatus like a flagella and it is a non-spore-forming bacteria. As you can visualize there, this is how the strapped viridans looks like under the microscope. It is forming chains. This is a chain-like growth pattern and these are round or spherical in nature. Let me zoom in. And it has got these round and spherical bacterium together in a chain and also there and has no motility apparatus it is purple in color this is how it looks and its diameter varies from 0.5 to 2 micrometers habitat unlike streptococcus pneumoniae this bacterium lives in oropharynx and is also part of our normal flora transmission transmission occurs due to dental procedures pathogenesis there are two major virulence factors when it comes to strapped virulence number one is biofilms and number two is dextrons the bacteria that i mentioned earlier three of them are really important the first one is strapped mutants along with strapped mites they both release biofilm and they are present in mouth because uh, due to any dental procedure they will get into and will cause the infection and this bacterium is present in the oropharynx so you can memorize it like mutants and mitons mute is for like no talking for mouth and you can memorize like that it is related to mouth and it can cause gingivitis and certain other diseases like dental caries and the second one is trapped sanguinis it is responsible for releasing dextrons what dextrons do they cause subacute bacterial endocarditis so you can memorize it like sanguine means blood and there's a lot of blood in the heart so this factor is responsible for causing what subacute bacterial endocarditis let us talk about the biofilms in detail what happens if a person has a problem in the tooth a person will go to the dentist to fix it or to extract it means to remove it during these procedures what will happen that bacteria will gain access to blood this trapped viridans because it's normally living in the oropharynx it will get into the blood what this condition is termed as when a bacteria is present in blood this is called as bacteremia. In mouth, this bacterium will cause gingivitis and dental caries. And blood moves throughout the body, so it will reach to every organ in the body. When it reaches heart, um, so, and suppose there are some problems in the heart, pre-existing problems like damaged heart valves, prosthetics, structural heart defects, what will this bacteria do? This bacteria will cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. If you guys are struggling with what's the biofilm, so I've got a detailed video and is linked in the description. Now let's talk about dextrons. This is the normal heart having the normal heart walls. And there are two layers in the heart wall. The top one is valvular endothelium and the second one is the lower one is subendothelium. This is not exposed as it is covered with the valvular endothelium. If the heart is damaged, there will be pores in valvular endothelium and subendothelium will be exposed. What will happen? These dextrons released by the bacteria, they will form aggregates of platelet fibrin complexes on subendothelium just like that. And these are called sterile vegetation. This is common in mitral valve. What will happen when bacteria is in blood? Bacteria will get into the subendothelium via the pores in the valvular epithelium and will cover the platelet fibrin complexes. And these will not be now called sterile vegetation. These are now bacterial vegetation. And this is where they cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. Clinical findings. Strapped weirdance is responsible for causing gingivitis, dental caries, subacute bacterial endocarditis, brain abscesses, and they're also responsible for causing community acquired infections. As I've mentioned, these diseases, so every disease has got its own symptoms. So for your ease, I've written the major ones there. Symptoms include tiredness, weakness, fever, maybe malaise, weight loss, respiratory problems like sinusitis, and problems with heart function diagnosis will need samples of blood and certain other things like if the disease is brain abscess we'll need the food from the abscess we'll also need um, samples from the respective areas you want to diagnose for now i'm considering blood as a sample we'll go for microscopy on gram staining it will reveal that this factor is gram positive because it is purple colored it is spherical in shape its diameter varies from 0.5 to 2 micrometers this is how it looks under the microscope round purple in color 
forming chains and diameter is 0.5 to 2 micrometers. Catalase test. As I've talked about it earlier, there's a test that tells us whether the bacteria is catalase positive or negative. As trapped reagents has no catalase enzyme, so this is catalase negative. And at the end of the catalase test, bubbles are formed. So if a test is negative, no bubbles will be formed. This is how the test will look like. Normally what happens, catalase converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen and forms bubbles but in the case of strapped avoidance there's no catalase so there will be no conversion and no bubbles formation culture culture on blood agar will reveal that this bacteria is alpha hemolytic because it did partial hemolysis and colonies on culture are bile insoluble and optogen resistant there are two main distinguishing features between strapped pneumonia and strapped avoidance let's talk about them the growth of strapped pneumonia is inhibited by optogen while that of strapped variants is not and the colonies of pneumococci or the strapped pneumonia are bile soluble while that of variants are bile insoluble treatment infections caused by strapped variants are treated with beta lactamases for example penicillin and macrolides for example erythromycin and third generation cephalosporins prevention infections caused by strapped variants are prevented by giving amoxicillin preoperatively by maintaining good hygiene and a healthy lifestyle Style. Let's review this really quick. The organism is Streptococcus viridans and is responsible for causing gingivitis, dental caries, subacute bacterial endocarditis, brain abscesses, and bacteremia. It is transmitted by dental procedures. Humans are the only host. There are no animal reservoirs. The primary location is the oropharynx. The diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, culture, and catalase test. And Streptococcus is treated with penicillin, macrolide, and third-generation cephalosporins. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram linked below. And if you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And be sure to like this video, share it with your friends if they need it, and I'll catch you soon. Assalamu alaikum.